Hello and welcome to the first full inspection video of the 2017 season for Bunbury Bees. The hive that we are inspecting today is at our ride apiary on the final day of March. It's the first look at this hive since overwintering and so I'm going in not knowing exactly what to expect. I'm able to get a general idea as I fed them but this is the first day of the year that has been warm enough to safely get the frames out and have a good look at what's going on inside. So I am removing the super, that top box there in brown, and underneath that the queen excluder, and I'll talk more about what function those parts do later in the video. As you can see, it's revealed that the bees are mostly clustered at the far side from uh, where the camera is and that gives us our first clue as to what's going on. So I take these parts, shake any bees off, and then lay them to one side to put back later, and then give them a little bit of smoke, and this is just to calm them down. People get very confused about what the smoke actually does. Uh, that first puff is very much to influence their behavior, uh, and to put them off from becoming aggressive and defensive of the hive, and instead switch them into a behaviour which in the wild would be a response to a, a forest fire and they would prepare for a forest fire by gorging on honey so that if the fire does consume where their wild nest would be they would be able to swarm out and look for a new home all of them full of honey uh, and so that they've got food ready to start a new nest at a new location now obviously we're not going to burn their hive down in this instance that would be an utter disaster but by switching them into that behaviour, that then helps us experience much less aggression. Now I'm wearing a bee suit, which isn't 100% sting proof. You can wear clothes thick enough to not get stung, but uh, when you work uh, with as many hives as we do, you have to make a little bit of a balance between your desire not to get stung and your desire not to die of heat exhaustion. So, I've taken out unused dirty frames there, and uh, they'll come home with me and I will melt those out to recover the wax, uh, something I'm sure I'll do a video of later in the season because that's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing that Kate and I both enjoy. Coming out now is a cardboard divider board. Now that was a bit of an experiment this year. It worked in some of our hives, it didn't in this one, and you can see they've chewed a hole through it. But that is uh, part of something that I like to do, which isn't in the standard model of beekeeping, which is to double queen, to put two queens in one hive, which is a great way to make use of otherwise small colonies. If I have two colonies that are too small to be producing a surplus of uh, honey, putting two queens together uh, with a divider board so the queens can't meet is a great way to make those two non-productive hives productive. Uh, and then I overwintered them so that they could keep each other warm but in this case, they chewed a hole through and looked like both colonies combined into one. The likelihood is the queens will have fought and one of them will have, uh, will have killed the other, which is a little sad, but it does mean that I've got a nice strong colony here uh, at the beginning part of the season. And so you'll see the strength of the colony uh, actually caught me off guard. I'd uh, put out equipment ready to uh, go one way, and at this point I changed my mind and realised there is another way to go. So, here I am showing you down into the hive. I've got six good frames there. Now the smaller colony, the smaller hive that I've put out is actually only got room for six frames and uh, without, uh, without any space to expand those bees would uh, look at doing swarming behaviour far too early in the air. Uh, and so instead I'm just going to now look over all of these looking for uh, the queen, good state of brood uh, to uh, indicate the queen's health and uh, look out for any other brood diseases or any problems that might need remedial action and then reorganize these uh, so that I can put in some frames that I've got that are chock full of honey for these bees to use to then process into wax so they eat honey and exude wax from their bodies that they make the honeycomb out of and so here I am now going through uh, the full inspection process so for this I need to look at every frame that has got brood on, so that's eggs, larva, and uh, bees ready to pupate. Here I am showing it to the camera. So the bees ready to pupate is that area to the left that's biscuity coloured. 
So that's a little wax capping over the pupa, just like the pupa is just like a, a butterfly chrysalis, and is the last stage before uh, they hatch out into an adult bee. So I'm having a good look on the other side. You want to get your eyes in. So on this side, it's actually very useful. You can see that there was honey on the left-hand side and brood on the right-hand side, and that difference in the colour of the cappings really shows up. Uh, the, the butter yellow colour for capped honey and the biscuity brown colour for capped brood. In between all of that brood will be eggs and larva uh, that is uncapped because the nurse bees, the adult bees that work inside the hive, will be tending those, feeding the larva, and so that they can grow nice and strong. Now this frame's lovely, it's covered in bees, they're doing that to keep the brood warm, and that's one of the reasons that I've not been able to look at the hives until this date, uh, because the air temperature's been a little bit too cool. If uh, you inspect when it's too cool, you're in danger of chilling the brood and killing it, which uh, it can then, particularly in the colder weather, it, it can rot and that's an invitation for all sorts of terrible hive diseases that you don't want. So we're about to, to reveal, I'm afraid, uh, my, my learning curve with the video production here. Um, so the camera that I've got has got a lovely fish eye lens which uh, gives, me, gives us a really good view um, of everything. But actually, I'm, I'm, what I'm learning from this video is I could get the camera much, much closer. So in future videos, I'm going to be clamping the camera right on the side of the hive. Uh, it does also mean I'm actually holding these frames up when I'm showing them to the camera, just a couple of inches from the, from the, from the camera. Uh, and actually, I need to get even closer if I'm going to show you things like the Queen, which I believe is on this frame just coming up. In the future, I may use uh, some still photos of things that I really want to show you in these videos so you can get a better look at them. So here I am searching for her. Uh, she's not on that frame, it must be the next one. You'll see me making use of the smoker as well to move bees around, a secondary use of the smoker. So we try really, really hard not to squash bees unnecessarily. And uh, the bees like to climb all over the place. They don't really understand what's going on. Uh, and so they'll quite often get in areas where you're, you're liable to squash them with your fingers or with the hive parts. Here's me showing you the queen. She's at the bottom right. You can barely make her out. Um, I'll, I'll come back with a future video with some much, much better footage of the queens. There I am pointing to her. You can maybe just about make out that she's much longer than the other bees. Uh, and so yes, we put her back in safely. You never want to drop the queen. Me showing it to the camera means that I'm then holding that uh, comb away from the hive. Now you should always really have it right over the hive so that if the queen does drop off it, she drops into the hive safely. Now I've dropped some queens in the grass in my time uh, and that's always a bit of a nightmare trying to then find her again. She may well, I don't clip queen's wings. That's again, we don't believe in unnecessary cruelty. Um, and that's just mutilating an animal for our own convenience. It just goes against everything that Kate and I stand for. Um, and so the, one of the things is that does then mean that uh, she will actually fly back in if she gets lost. I've done it just once where I couldn't find her at all. And when I came back next week, she was back in happy as Larry. So yes, one of the other things that you can use the smoker for is just to get the bees out of the way of anywhere where you're liable to crush. So there's me showing off a uh, frame of foundation. So that's totally clean. Foundation is a wax sheet that's uh, just nice and straight. If uh, you let the bees do their own thing, they'll make wiggly woggly uh, honeycomb that just makes working with them a nightmare. So we give them that wax sheet just to keep them straight so they build the honeycomb where it's useful to us. And here's me just closing up the gaps. Again, just looking down, the, down just to make sure that there's no bees in the crush zone. You'll see I'll occasionally just give a little puff of smoke, nothing major, I'm not trying to make them cough. I'm just trying to get them out of that crush zone so that they can push together nicely. Um, we do really believe in trying to, it, it just doesn't hurt to take a moment more to be kind. Uh, some commercial beekeepers uh, will tell you that you can't afford to be squeamish, um, which, you know, it means that they can work on more hives in a day than we can, but we take our little bit more time to uh, be that little bit kinder. So, 
I've put a frame of foundation on either side of the brood nest there. So those six frames that I'm keeping have now got a blank frame of foundation on either side, one to the left, one to the right. But then on that right hand side, I've got a nice gap. So what I'm gonna put into that gap is frames with lots of stored honey in. Now that stored honey is overwintered and I don't really want it to end up in a jar, but wax is made from honey. The bees eat the honey and then they metabolize that up into a, into a very high density fat that's wa wax and that exudes from their body. And then the other bees pull it off them and chew that into the honeycomb. And so rather than having them use that, use the nice new nectar they're bringing in this spring already to make wax, because to make one pound of wax, bees have to eat about seven pounds of honey. Um, I'm going to give them some of this that stored overwintered on the far side of a nice clean frame so that they should eat that and then use that to, to draw out the new honeycomb. And as I come back in next week, I should see most of that gone. Look at that, that frame's too dirty, but it's got some stores in, so I'll try and get the bees to, to, to eat those stores so that I can take that frame out either next week or in a few weeks' time and recover the wax. There's the box that I was going to use, the nuke that I decided against. And so now we're going to put the hive back together again. There's the queen excluder, a mesh that the workers can fit through, but the queen is too fat to. And then on top of that, we put the super frame, uh, the super box full of super frames, which is where the honey that goes into jars goes into. And so that we keep much cleaner. There's me using, trying to get the bees off the crush zone here. You can see one on that nearest edge. I promise you I do spot her. There we go. We give her a little flick off. We just check all the crush zones, make sure that there's no bees on there, and then replace that super box. And uh, then I put the lid on, but I, the camera runs out of battery before then. And uh, we'll be back to them next week. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do like, comment and subscribe. Um, both on our Facebook and our YouTube channels. Links, uh, links in the description of both. Uh, do check out our website as well for honey. We've not got very much, but there will be more coming very soon. And we also have our experience days if you would like to experience beekeeping firsthand. They're available on our website. Uh, use of one of our bee suits included, a nice thick one that's bee proof. A fantastic experience for, for anybody who's interested in beekeeping. Thank you very much.